Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City of Benton, North Committee of the Whole Meeting. Today is Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. It's 6 30 p.m. Thank you all for being here. Our first agenda item is a presentation. As you know, there's been some changes to the Iowa law, so we uh, asked our staff to take a quick look, and we have for our presentation our City Attorney, Chris Curran, and our Police Chief, Keith Kimball. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your work on the subject. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor and Counsel. As the mayor indicated, there was some legislation passed um, effective July 1 that expanded the ability for uh, the use of ATVs and UTVs under Iowa law. Um, just real quickly, I had to look up the difference between an ATV and a UTV. Essentially, an ATV is typically single rider, um, oftentimes handlebars. You might straddle it like a, like a motorcycle. A UTV is, is a, oftentimes um, two or four passengers, similar to a, a Gator or a Polaris, um, becoming more and more popular. And the question is, where does the city want to allow the use of these vehicles, if, if at all? We do have presently an ordinance that addresses ATVs. It doesn't reference UTVs, and it allows it in certain limited circumstances. And our goal here was to update our ordinance to um, have it address UTVs. We also have it to address uh, snowmobiles, which uh, prior we didn't address at all. And there are very limited areas in the city where snow snowmobiles would be allowed. But certain ditches out in the, on the outskirts of town might, might be allowable. We wanted to address all of these things um, and to update our ordinance to be compliant with Iowa law. This item, as you know, is not on the agenda tonight. We've got a draft ordinance, but we just wanted to have a discussion for where council wanted to go with this. Our goal, what, the way that we drafted it, is to maintain the status quo. Um, and so it would be essentially allowing the use of these vehicles in, in very limited circumstances. And that was, the, so that's how we drafted it, but we certainly want to hear from you so that there are tweaks that we do that. Um, and I know that there are questions as well because we do also have an ordinance on golf carts. And the question uh, logically would come up of how are these different than golf carts and should these be allowed um, in, in, fewer, on, in fewer areas or um, the same or, you know, that's, those, those issues are what we wanted to discuss. But just so you know, this, this ordinance is intended to maintain the status quo and to bring up to the state of the art um, to address Iowa law. And it really, it's, I think, uh, you know, Keith and, and his team were, um, were key in, in looking at this. And I guess at this point, I just turn it over to Keith. Thanks, Chris. Good evening, Mayor and uh, City Council. Uh, so as Chris stated, we were kind of a little bit blindsided uh, as the, the law went into effect July 1st, where it, it kind of opened up the ability for these to be used uh, more, less restrictive in, in cities. So our recommendation, and, or my recommendation with, with my staff is looking at it is we, we drafted an ordinance uh, that was taken from, from other jurisdictions in Iowa that already were uh, restrictive of the ATVs and UTVs and we wrote it up in a way just so that we could, uh, main, like Chris said, maintain status quo. Uh, the golf carts, uh, just a little bit of a difference. Obviously, we've had a golf, court, golf cart ordinance uh, for some time. Uh, we feel that the way it's written is uh, it doesn't create any issues in the city. Uh, and there's a big and there's differences of golf carts and ATVs and UTVs. Uh, golf carts are obviously quiet, a lot quieter. They can't attain the speeds that a UTV or ATV can, and um, they're just in the very in, in the residential the residential area. Uh, yeah, Chris, Rich is there. Yeah. Uh, so, looking at ATVs, as as you know, they are they are a lot louder. They, they average decibel readings of anywhere of 85 to over 100 decibels. Uh, they have a lot more horsepower. They can accelerate much quicker. They can go, they can go at highway speeds. So uh, 
for, for safety reasons and, and uh, nuisance reasons and uh, complaint reasons, we just think that the best uh, policy would be to, to try and stay t status quo. And so uh, that's kind of how this, this ordinance has been drafted. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any. You guys might want to clarify, Your Honor, if I could. Yeah, please. Thank you. You might want to clarify. I believe currently golf carts are only allowed on residential streets, not collectors, not right. arterials. Yep. So they are only allowed to be operated. They have to be by a licensed driver. They can only be operated during daylight hours, uh, regardless if they have lights. Uh, they cannot be dri driven in, at night. They are. Uh, they have to have a slow moving sign attached to the back of the golf cart and a one of those I call them a, a bike flag, um, and they can only be uh, driven in residential areas, not any no thoroughfares um, or main streets in the city. Uh, they can be. They can cross over those main thoroughfares to get from one point to another, but they can't continuously drive on on any of those. Is that the same thing you're going to do with the ATVs, <clears throat> UTVs? Well, the ATVs or UTVs won't be permitted at all. <clears throat> on, I mean, they'll still be restricted, not even on any city or residential areas. So it is it is different, uh, which right now ATVs and UTVs are not allowed uh, on city streets. Uh, and that's what the way the ordinance is drafted is to maintain what we current prior to the state enacting this law was to keep keep things exactly the way they are, uh, the way we wrote this ordinance. We, we did add uh, a, a direct crossing language, which comes right from the statute yep. for to, in, to the extent that there are exceptions, because this ordinance does start with the baseline. All right. Uh, hold on. This isn't going to be dead. If you want to stay, that's great. You're going to have to be quiet when we're going to meet. No I want to make sure we're not here. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you, Your Honor. So it, the, the ordinance starts with a baseline that they are ATVs, UTVs, snowmobiles are not permitted except with the exceptions described in the ordinance. And one of those would be a direct crossing across a prohibited street for some other, you know, accepted use. So it's, it's limited. It's, it's language that's in 321 G, which is the snowmobile statute 321 I, which is the ATV statute. So we did add that language in, but again, it's, it's only for limited use. If you can't drive them anywhere, how do you expect to cross the street? Well, you, you, you can use it. I mean, there's the same exceptions that we had before for agricultural use, for Emergency. construction um, and maintenance, for land surveyors. These are, um, or in emergencies. Emergencies um, would be the other. But again, these, these are the, this is the issue, I suppose, is where do we want to allow this? And, and so we added in that direct crossing exception to be consistent with um, the potential use under the exceptions. And the question is, how broad do we want those exceptions to be? And, and the idea too is like out more, the rural areas of Baton Rouge where you may be able to use one of these on your own property, you may still have, you have to cross over. And right now it's prohibited. If, if we don't have the exception in there, then that's why the, the crossing over of those streets. But the idea is we don't want these to be used as general residential modes of transportation is, is the idea because, uh, because of the, the noise, the speeds, the horsepower. Um, How do you see them different than a motorcycle that makes noise, has horsepower? But motorcycles are, are allowed to be on city, city streets at all times. They're, they're, a, different, they're a different animal. There's, I mean, there's UTVs that are street legal. <laughs> I mean, they're they're essentially small cars. They yeah, they are noisier than an average car with today's mufflers. But they're, I mean, they have roll cages, they have seat belts, they have turn signals, they have <clears throat> lights. No different than a small vehicle. They are generally louder than motorcycles, uh, and they accelerate at higher RPMs. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there as far as decibels and things like that. So. Anybody else have some thoughts? Go ahead, Lisa, and then we'll go to Bill. This probably ties in maybe to where Scott's thinking. I know of people say off of Criswell, between Criswell and Middle, 
actually my son was on, that would maybe take a snowmobile and go out, say, you know, cut out and make its way over to Criswell and then go out, say, Wells Ferry out towards Argo and then take off. So this is going to eliminate going along. Now, obviously, middle and fourth group have changed, but it does. this is going to affect that area. Is that kind of what you're thinking, Scott? Yeah, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it will. Yeah, I don't believe so. That's not the intent. Okay. And I guess those, that's the question that here. The snowmobiles, <coughs> presently, we don't have a snowmobile ordinance, so it would be under Iowa law. And it would have to be in a ditch. It, it yeah, could not be. It couldn't be in the the boulevard area, if you will. It couldn't be on the street except in emergency circumstances, which I don't think. Again, these, this is a policy question, purely up, you know, in your. This is what you want to do, but it would. The intent would not be to restrict that use along Criswell and in those ditches mm -hmm. um, where snowmobiles are uh, okay. are used and. Okay. So. Okay. I know about the the, lake the hard part would be somebody would ride that. They got to get there, so they may be coming out of Century Heights. Right. So right. to get there, well, that's where the would be crossing, legal. The direct crossing language would come into play. Yeah. Yeah. So. Bill, you had something. Yeah. Are mini bikes classified as ATV or UTV? No. Most of them are unlicensed. They're on city streets. They're loud. If they're light, yeah, that's, I mean, they have to be licensed to be on a city street. Well, most most aren't, Keith, you know that. Well, if they are, and we, we see them, we can enforce that. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we can definitely enforce that. <clears throat> Talk to us a little bit about the enforcement piece. Um, does this make it easier? Does it make it harder? Do we have a, a lot of tickets that we're writing? Have we seen an uptick since the law went into effect? It's been a short couple of weeks. We have not. I, I think if we, my personal opinion is if we, if we don't, if we have a, if we don't stay status quo, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be, it's going to be difficult, uh, and there's going to be more calls. I think the general public right now hasn't really caught on, and so I think they maybe assume because, like, yeah, I will tell you when this was enacted, Davenport City Davenport put stuff out on their social media right away saying we already have laws in effect, so don't think about <laughs> driving because we we've already got these ordinances in place to restrict that. We never had that, those ordinances, so that's why we wanted to get ahead of this and get, get things put into place before it does become an, an issue. Scott, you have any thoughts? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, my thoughts are somewhat along the line of Council Member Webster, that you, and I think you did a pretty good job of articulating the, you know, why, why they need to restrict, why do we care, you know, as, and I do think that to, to the point, the governor, I think, made, you know, got 99 counties, and many of them are very rural. This is a practical application for a lot of the state of Iowa, but for maybe a more metro area, it is dangerous and maybe a little more disruptive. So I understand your argument. Thank Frank, you. how about you? Any thoughts? Greg, any thoughts? How about you, Jerry? Well, and, and one thing I'd say is the speeds, the, the sheer speeds. Remember, these ATVs and UTVs can go anywhere from 50 to 80 miles an hour. 
uh, golf cart at top speed, you're lucky to get 20, you know, 25. And so that there's probably some, some reasoning behind that uh, as far as, you know, the, I guess the required safety equipment. I will just tell you that we generally don't get complaints of golf carts by citizens. I mean, they may be curious when they see one in their neighborhood whether or not they're legal, and we clarify those, but we don't get, we don't get complaints uh, from golf carts in residential neighborhoods. Well, they have, they have not been permitted uh, up until this point by, and the state, th this is kind of what the state kind of did is kind of what they did with fireworks and, and my opinion where they kind of opened up the door uh, and had to, you know, where it, it put it back into the, the city to have to, res to do the restrictions. So it's, uh, like I said, these were up to local rule before and it was really up to the local governments to enact what, whether permit permit or not permit, and this law kind of opened it up so that made it so it was uh, less restricted throughout the state. Yeah, I, I think Jerry, the we presently have an ordinance that addresses only ATVs. It just doesn't address technically UTVs at all. So I think at the very least we need to update our ordinance to address UTVs so we don't run into some technical issue there. We only allow presently uh, ATVs if certain conditions apply, such as agricultural use, land surveyor services, um, you know, use by the city and uh, maintenance um, along a, a road or highway for emergency services, or by use of, of a landowner on their property. So this, in the, under the new statute, I think it still would make sense to clarify where, if at all, these these vehicles are allowed and to uh, update it to include all types of these vehicles. And, um, and and one more thing is that the statute does allow regulation. So, you know, in theory, I mean, there, we could add time times that they could be used. Um, there's a host of, of options available. This, again, the, the intent of this was to essentially maintain the status quo and not to have any drastic change um, based on this new law. And if and if we want to change it, then, then we do so. What's the time frame that you're looking for comment from council on what they're thinking? Obviously, you're just presenting it tonight when they've got some questions and now they may formulate some opinions. What are your thoughts? Well, my thought is that it, it, I, I know that there's maybe some difference of opinion on, on the um, the scope of what the law did. I still believe that, you know, we presently do not, have not authorized use. Our ordinance says that you cannot use these except for limited circumstances. And I think I, I, I would like to get this done sooner rather than later, but I also want to make sure that we're thoughtful and intentional about what we do. Probably so the next cycle would be okay. Next cycle would be, would be fine or, if, or, or the meeting after that. Okay. Council, we probably can take a look at it, read through it talk to each other and, and see if you come up with some things to talk to Chris and Keith about and then before the next meeting, right? Yes, Scott? I, I only have one more quick comment. Just yeah, so let's do just it. Just so they know. Um, I can email them, but the the one thing, so I'm not quite as concerned overall about arterials, having these out on 53rd or something like that, but lining them up with golf carts, I think, is a better idea. At, at least it's a compromise to see what happens for now. But the one thing that's not on here for sure, if you're not allowing my residential roads is, some people use ATVs to clear their driveways, which means they have to go into the street at some point in time in order to clear those driveways. That would be another area, even if you completely banned these things from streets, I would think you'd al still allow that. There's, that would be an issue. I mean, yeah, that's, that's probably not an issue, but. You're probably not gonna have a cop write a ticket for somebody's no, doing that, but it's be better to probably put it in there if you do go to that full extent, yeah. that that is a, a use that, it's used. I mean, yeah. my neighborhood alone had two or three of them that used ATVs for that and probably helped the city more than they ever heard of by doing that. So. Good yeah. point. Yep. Anything else on this? All right, well, let's get to work on trying to give them some direction over the next couple of weeks. And now we can move to our operational items for tonight's meeting. Uh, any operational item that any particular council member would like to raise at this time? Typically, we don't have any. Take a look at the consent agenda items for me then, please. Short consent, short operational agenda tonight. 
Um, anything on consent that any particular council member would like to raise at this time? Question? Jerry's got... Yes, Jerry. It's frozen. You look like you might have got frozen, Jerry. We'll give you a second. Is there anybody else who has anything on... That's a look. Yeah, froze. <laughs> Bill, go ahead. I see that uh, for the position of uh, combination residential unit inspector and building inspector and community development, there's only one person on the approved list. Do we have a short list of candidates or uh, civil service commission thought that maybe only one was qualified? Kathleen, can you help us with that? Answer that? Or Mark? Yeah, I'd be glad to jump in, uh, Mayor, and thank you, Councilman Connors. We um, we worked together with HR, put, a, put um, I think, four people through to the testing phase. Only two uh, took the test, and of those two, um, only one was deemed um, ready to move forward or, or deemed to be list ready, if you will. And so that's how we got to just a list of one. Okay. Make, made it an easy choice. Yes, sir. Thank you. Jerry, did you maybe reboot? You're still frozen on our end. Have we had the power to freeze him all along? <laughs> <laughs> we will certainly allow you to ask your question about whatever consent agenda item you had a question about when we take the consent agenda up here in a few minutes as I talk slowly to let you try to log on. Okay. You might want to reboot, Jerry, if you can hear us. Any items Jeff, to be added to by me? council? I don't have any. We've got about seven minutes before seven, but so we have some time. Okay. Let's entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, here, let's do this. Let's keep all our consent agenda items on consent by motion at this time. I'll move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We'll take up the consent agenda as written. Could we please entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We stand adjourned. Good work. You got to call him, Jeff. We're going to. Who's back there now? Lauren. No, Lauren, I think is. Well, here we go. We'll just. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City of Bettendorf City Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, July 19th, 2022, at 7 o'clock p.m. Michelle, would you please call the roll? Adamson? Brown? Here. Connors? Here. Nauman? Here. Sexer? Aiden Webster. Here. All right, fantastic. Thank you all for being here. Now, if you could all please rise, remove any caps or headdresses you may have, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. That will be followed by an invocation given by Pastor Richard Pecora of All Saints Lutheran Church. Please remain standing for our invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible. To do these things, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bacora. Nice to see you. We do have a proclamation this evening. This is for Americans with Disabilities Awareness Day, July 26. And hello, dear. So for that, we welcome Marissa Cantu, the Community Education and Marketing Advocate for the Illinois and Iowa Center for Independent Living. <clears throat> Marissa, you want to come join me up front? All right, I have a proclamation from the office of the mayor. Whereas on July 26, 1990, George H.W. Bush signed into law the Americans with Disabilities Act to ensure that civil rights of people with disabilities. This legislation established a clear and comprehensive nationwide mandate for the elimination of discrimination against individuals with disabilities. And whereas the city of Bettendorf affirms the principles of equity and inclusion for persons with disabilities as set forth by the state of Iowa and as embodied in the ADA, the laws of our state and ordinances of our city. And whereas numerous organizations in the city of Bettendorf and in the state of Iowa work with constituents and communities to bring forth the promise of hope and freedom that is envisioned by the passage of the ADA. And whereas on July 26, 2020, the, Bet the city of Bettendorf will celebrate 
this 32nd anniversary and recognize the progress that has been made by reaffirming the principles of equality and inclusion and rec recommitting our efforts to reach full ADA compliance. Now, therefore, I, Robert Gallagher, the mayor of the city of Bettendorf, do hereby proclaim July 26th, 2022, as Americans with Disabilities Act Awareness Day in our city. Here, 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 here. You're welcome. You want to do that picture and then you can address the crowd. Oh, let's do it in front of this little backdrop thing. Give it a go. Thanks, me, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Marissa, please. Thank you. On behalf of the Illinois Iowa Center for Independent Living and the Quad City Disabilities Awareness Coalition, um, we would like to thank you for recognizing the 32nd anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, we take great pride in providing these services of accessibility in our community um, all over the Quad Cities. Um, we actually serve Rock Island, Mercer, and Henry County, Scott, Clinton, Muscatine County, and Iowa. And we want to thank you for recognizing this very significant day that empowers people with disabilities to continue to be as independent as possible in their communities. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are now at public requests of council. If you would like to be heard by council to make a request to our city council, you can be heard at this time. First, please state your name and your address. We'd like to hear from you. Make sure that you limit your comments to two to three minutes. Please do not be repetitive. So if somebody says something you already <laughs> said, there's no reason to come up and be repetitive. Please, no outbursts, clapping, sirens, shouting. Please make your request respectfully to council. We have somebody ready to speak. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. My name is Dan Corey. I'm a resident of Bettendorf. I live at 5056 55th Avenue. And I'm here tonight with a group of folks uh, to show our support for the Life Fitness Center. Uh, a few of us wanted to speak, but we have consolidated our thoughts, and I will read those. I'd like the council to see the people who are here tonight in support of the Life Fitness Center. So can we have a show of hands for those folks that are here? Okay, good group. Um, as you can see, most of the people here are a certain age group. We are active members, which are age 50 and older, who want to recreate at the Life Fitness Center. We want to go to the fit to work out, to play tennis, to lift weights, to use the track, to take classes, play pickleball, <clears throat> And very importantly, be social. It's a, it's a big social event. Studies have shown that seniors who have regular physical activity and social interaction have improved health and well-being. Is this not what you want for all residents of Bettendorf, regardless of age? The Y has made it known that if they get the Life Fitness Center in the deal to pay for the outdoor pool, that they will turn the fit into a youth campus for gymnastics and soccer only. The Y CEO has said that the existing members can just go somewhere else. <clears throat> Why do we, the older residents, have to find somewhere else to go? Shouldn't there be equity for all in Bettendorf? You have a group of folks here who have not for years, but for decades, have paid our dues. And we're just looking for our slice of the pie. And unfortunately, I'm seeing that starting to get down to a sliver. <clears throat> Why does the, the city feel that in order to build a pool for the youth, they have to sacrifice the Bettendorf seniors and sell the Life Fitness Center? Basically, if that happens, I'm seeing it that you're telling us it's okay for us to settle, to settle for unsatisfactory facilities. <clears throat> or you're telling us to go elsewhere. I don't want to go back to Illinois to look for facilities. I want to stay here in Bettendorf. I love this town. I know firsthand experience. The Betplex and the Y have a very different feel to them than Life Fitness Center. From talking to fit members, 
I know neither place would be suitable for their needs. Many of the people here tonight have contacted council members and have had productive conversations. There are several council members that are willing to have discussions <clears throat> to keep the Life Fitness Center open. We thank you. We would like to find a way to do this together. We suggest forming a task force made up of people passionate about the Life Fitness Center and keeping it open. Together, we can find ways to increase membership, reduce operating losses, and possibly expand what is being currently offered at the Life Fitness Center. We have all sorts of ideas and are ready to get to work immediately. <clears throat> In closing, forming a task force will enable the city to look at additional sources of revenue, such as offering competitive membership packages, including free classes for memberships like the competition does, <clears throat> and exploring relationships with local companies and adult living communities. All three of these simple ideas could show immediate results for revenue. There's so much opportunity here to keep the Life Fitness Center open to all groups and be equitable to seniors in the community. Uh, thank you for listening and please keep the Life Fitness Center open. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Glory. Anybody else want to be heard? Please approach the podium and state your name and address. <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name is Joe Dooley, 2603 College Avenue, Davenport. So uh, uh, nine years ago when I was looking for a new fitness center, uh, the only place I really considered coming to was Life Fitness Center because I knew of the reputation and uh, I definitely have experienced it as a member. A uh, very welcoming organization. It's very well managed. It's very clean. Uh, great members there. I've made a lot of friends. So I only can echo what Mr. Corey said. Um, and I would add, uh, perhaps before you enter in it, into any kind of an agreement with the Y, go back and check the history of the agreements that they had with the Davenport Community School District with regard to the facilities at North High School and West. And you might be very surprised what you find, unless you have already discovered it. But uh, Anyway, I will end on that note, and uh, please keep the Y or the <laughs> LFC, LFC alive mm -hmm. and going. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dooley. Anybody else wish to be heard at public request of council? <clears throat> Hi, my name's Kevin Peterson. I live at 4150 East 60th Street, number 701, Davenport. Um, in 1977, my wife and I got married right after college. We moved over to Bettendorf, and we lived there up till six years ago when we downsized to the condo um, where we live now. Um, we still live in the Bettendorf um, School District. Um, thing is, I want to talk about um, back when I was in high school, 1971, when the um, Fit Center was built. I started coming over in 72 and 73 to play. It was the first heated air-conditioned club we had, the only outdoor club we had that was, um, could be played indoors was at um, Duck Creek um, Park and it was a bubble. So in the wintertime it was freezing cold. So when that club opened up and Jack Hollander was the manager, I mean, it was a great place and you've got both sides of the rivers was coming over at that time to play tennis. Um, I started out playing there. Um, my daughter, we lived in Bettendorf. She went to Pleasant Valley High School. Um, she worked out there, took lessons there. And now my grandson, um, he takes lessons there and my Daughter and son-in-law, they live out on St. Andrew's Circle, so they still live in Bettendorf, and they support the Life Fitness Center through um, basketball, going up there and playing, and like I say, taking tennis lessons, um, so they're involved. Um, for three generations of my family, and I'm sure I'm not the only family in Bettendorf that has had multiple generations to use a fit center, and to see it be sold and given to the Y, um, I think it's a shame. My wife, she's also a runner and runs four miles when she trains, she tried joining the Y. The Y is a two-lane track, and she can't run in there because the walkers gets in the way. So she has to train at the Life Fitness Center because it allows her to have um, the wide um, lanes for the running and then for the walkers separate. So um, I really support for the pickleball, too, because I play pickleball. I think Bettendorf has really done a great job 
develop in the outdoor courts after painting up tennis courts when it first came on, but realized how it was growing fast and created outdoor courts. We still need the support of the city council to make sure that we do keep the Life Fitness Center open so we can still have indoor pickle or pickleball in the wintertime. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. If there's anybody else who wishes to be heard on public request? And if you think you're going to speak and you want to start making your way back there so that you're ready to go, that's totally fine as well. Well, after hearing that, I had to comment. I wasn't planning to. I'm just off the golf course, so forgive me if everything's not articulate. Um, my family... Start with name and address. Paul Freund. Hi, Paul. 300 River Drive, Baton Dorf. Uh, my family used to own the property where the Life Fitness Center sits right now. And uh, my dad, who was a farmer... Um, Never was into physical fitness, but as he retired, he went there, and every year for Christmas, we had no idea what to buy him, so we'd buy him a certificate to go to the Life Fitness Center. And um, since then, I've been going there, and uh, it's been a great family tradition. Um, great people there, great facility, has a lot to offer, all of a Bettendorf from volleyball, badminton, pickleball, whatever. It has everything there that you would want, and um, I hope that you, in your wisdom, will uh, keep it open. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Freund. Always nice to see you. Anybody else wish to be heard at public request of council? Hi, my name is Teresa Myshak. My son's name is Robert Myshak. We live at 3436 Valley Drive in LeClaire. Um, my son, we, we first knew about Life Fitness um, shortly after we moved here. Um, but he was approximately five years of age when he first started tennis. So as you can see, he's, he's had many years of, of, of um, tennis training, and most of them have been through um, the Life Fitness. Um, I just want to say that Yes, there are two tennis programs in the Quad Cities. Um, however, um, choice is really important when you're looking at a sport like this. It's very expensive, just like any other sport. Um, one of our one of the tennis um, tennis clubs has had some recent renovations um, and some construction, and as a result. Um, their, um, their prices have become, uh, has, have actually doubled. And so we have since then um, transferred our membership to Life Fitness. Um, Life Fitness has, has exactly what we need, um, and it's actually much more local for us. Um, you know, there's roughly 350,000 people in the Quad City area, um, but only 12 indoor tennis courts. And when these go, there's only nine. Um, we have a, a huge... Um, growth of, of pickleballers, um, and, it's, and it's global. Um, and I think nine, nine courts are, are not enough for a metro metropolitan area. Um, um, the, other, the other thought I had was Madison Keys. Does everybody know who Madison Keys is? I know who Madison Keys is. <clears throat> she was a, a native from Rock Island. She started her training, tennis training, when she was, I think, three or four. <laughs> um, but she started at Life Fitness. And I'm thinking, what would happen if Life Fitness didn't have tennis courts at that time? Would we have a Madison Keys? Um, so, and not just her, but um, the director has a son who is putting the Quad City area on the map. No doubt. He has skills he has tennis skills like um and he's just amazing he's amazing and he's ranked very highly um but not only him but there's other er other local local kiddos who are who are up and coming and if to take these three tennis courts away um th this option is going to go is, is going to go away um my son has has spent many hours um, um, in, in tournaments. 
and mostly in the, in the Chicagoland area. And to compare a kiddo growing up here versus a kiddo in the Chicagoland area, um, kids there can find tennis courts anywhere, can play with kids anywhere. Um, the opportunities are so much more in the, in the Chicagoland area versus here. First, you gotta find somebody to hit with, and then second, you gotta find a, an open court. You know, so I just, I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna increase our, our barriers to finding, finding tennis courts for kids who need things to do. We need kids who are, who are active, um, who are on task, who have skills, um, and, and just have, contribute to, to good health. Um, Thank you, Ms. Myshock. Did you want to say something, bud? What's uh, your name? Uh, Robert. Hi, Robert. And um, I just wanted to say that, like, losing the Life Fitness Center would mean losing opportunities for kids at my age and for everybody, all ages. That's right. Um, nice job. Thank you, Robert. Nice job. <laughs> All right, who else wants us to be heard? Please approach the podium, you betcha. State your name and address, please. We'd like to hear from you. Um, Mike Jepson, I live in 629 West Grove Street, Long Grove. Uh, so my daughter, Madeline, has been at the Life Fitness Center since she was six years old. So she's played a lot of tennis. We've taken a lot of tennis lessons through the Life Fitness Center, and we've really enjoyed all our time there. We feel like it really is a gem. We come all the way from Long Grove into Benton <coughs> to, to play tennis, and she enjoys every second of it. And I guess looking out here at Robert, and I kind of want to speak on behalf of some of the youth tennis players out there, that this facility, it kind of services basically Davenport, Bettendorf, LeClaire, and North Scott. There's about 150,000 people within that area that this services. And we've been over to the, the uh, uh, Quad City Tennis Club, and we came back, you know. So I think... I would really like to, you know, I know that it's a financial decision for you guys and you got to do what you got to do, but, but I want to say that the, t the pickleball and the tennis is, is unique. And if you guys could find some way to keep that capability or that, that opportunity within Bettendorf, I think you'd be doing yourselves a, a very, very good thing. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jepson. Who's next? Anybody else want to be heard? <coughs> if you think you're going to speak and you want to head to the back, that's great. We'll be able to move you through. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, Lisa Brooks, um, 6252 Hess Court in Bettendorf. I didn't really plan to speak, but um, I do want to speak up in favor of the fitness center. Um, I know it provides a ton of services. I have a lot of experience on the tennis side. Um, I actually <laughs> played tennis there in the 80s, maybe the 70s, I'm not even sure. Um, but uh, back in the 80s, I actually cleaned the courts at 10 o'clock on Sunday nights in order to get some free court time because we couldn't afford paying for court time. But, um, you know, through the years, there have been up to four indoor tennis facilities, and now we're down to two. And if we go down to one, it will really limit the sport, the exposure to new players, particularly on the Iowa side. Um, Although it's not a long distance to get to the Quad City uh, Tennis Center, going across the bridge can be a big deal. Um, so having availability to the sport and exposure for young kids who are just trying to figure out what sport they, they like. Both of my kids, one who is now eight, and my, that's my daughter, and my son who is 15, both play and take lessons, including my son private lessons uh, through uh, the fitness center and have really enjoyed developing their game there. Um, so I, I do think we have to consider accessibility to the courts and who we're gonna expose and the new players down the road. Like Teresa mentioned, some of these famous players may not be playing the same today, but um, knowing that the sport is going down and down and back in the day it had six courts, <laughs> now it has three. Um, but at least we have some on, on this side. And I know there probably are things we could do to increase usage, um, and we could partner together, like someone else mentioned earlier. There's people ready to, to find a different and explore different ways to increase the usage 
of, of the fitness center, including the tennis courts. But um, I just want to speak up in, in favor of, of really having um, availability for tennis and indoor tennis um, to the Iowa side, I think will be important long term. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Anybody else wish to be heard? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. Um, my name is Ross Barlow. I live at 3365 Lindy Lane in Bettendorf, Iowa. I have a little bit different take on all this than everyone else. Um, I moved here in 1993. Um, I've been a member of the Y and, and the Life Fitness Center both. I've enjoyed being members of both at different times. And I guess I'm more of an advocate here for tennis and pickleball. Um, when, I mean, we have to all recognize that Iowa winners are very, very hard. And there's only so many, much things you can do on a treadmill inside um, during the winter time. You know, tennis and pickleball, the pickleball booming is, I think is a, serves a very valid public recreational purpose. When I moved here in 1993, I looked for a place to play tennis and I was shocked to find that there was two indoor clubs on the Illinois side. And there was a place here on Iowa side, it was only three courts. And um, over the years, I started to hear rumors about possibly the Y becoming owners of Life Fitness Center. And I thought, you know, it makes good economic sense, that type of thing. And in the back of my head, I thought, you know what, maybe the Y will do the right thing at the Life Fitness Center and make it all tennis courts. <laughs> um, a gentleman earlier here today mentioned that um, possibly one purpose that the Y would use it would, would be for soccer, and soccer is great. Um, but it kind of brought a bad feeling back in my stomach in the sense that of history repeating itself. Um, about 10 years ago, my daughter was a competitive figure skater at the recreation facility down in Davenport, and they sold out to the city. They lost their second sheet of ice. All the Russian pros left, and we had a significant decline in figure skating for kids here in the Quad Cities. Um, I still ride my bike by there on the weekends. I go in there every once in a while. I see some skaters there, and I see an empty soccer field. Um, and so I really don't want to see that same thing happen to tennis here, that would happen to figure skating. Um, my son was a competitive tennis player, just graduated from PV. Both places, Iowa side, Illinois side, were important to him. Um, you know, you can't just say that, well, let's just go over and play at the QCTC. Um, first of all, they don't offer the same competitive program they once did, due to various things we won't get into here. It's not as much of an option for kids as once was due to management changes. Um, furthermore, um, you know, to say to just go over there and play tennis is kind of like forgets the public purpose we serve the citizens of Bettendorf with and sense that, um, well, why don't, if we have that same idea, why don't we just close Palmer Hills Golf Course and people can join Crow Valley or Davenport Country Club? Um, there is a valid public purpose for the city of Bettendorf to ensure that there is access to indoor tennis and pickleball throughout the, you know, throughout the winter months. And uh, that's the point I'd like to make and for you all to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Always nice to see you. Anybody else wish to be heard at public request of council? Oh, okay. If you want to speak, head on over. Make sure you're ready. Bob, one piece of paper tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I grew up in Bettendorf. Um, I remember uh, in, in the name and address. I'm sorry. I know who you Two, are and probably where you Benton live. Street, Leclerc, Iowa. And I teach at 604 Belmont Road, Bettendorf. Yep, and your name? Uh, Randy Brockage. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the importance of, and, and Ross hit on it, a lot of the amenities that Bettendorf offers, they're all good. Um, it'd be a shame to pick one over the other. Um, a pool is important, and I know that's a, an a upcoming need and an important need. Um, the Bettner pool, when I was growing up, probably about 10 years old, I remember one summer it was my babysitter. Um, basically, my parents bought me a year pass, and I went there in the morning, and I was there stuck. Uh, um, <laughs> thank goodness they had, they had a concession stand. I could uh, get a little food there, but uh, anyway. Um, the importance of the fitness center is, is um, just huge. I, I said last time I was here that it really is a gem, and, and I don't want that to be forgotten. Um, 
because it is it, to a lot of people, and a lot of people um, really benefit from that. The uh, fact that um, both tennis and pickleball are lifetime fitness activities are um, just enormously important. Um, I know Bettendorf is is growing and expanding. Um, living out in Leclerc, I I frequent the Betplex area and out towards Leclerc and the housing that's coming up. So. Um, it would be a shame, in my opinion, to see all this expansion. And yet, um, as far, far as tennis goes, it's a contraction. Um, I do also want to point out um, something um, that would be a domino effect, in my opinion. I, I think probably people wouldn't argue with this. But um, if you lose a fitness center, um, the people who are employed there are going to lose their jobs. And the next domino to fall will be if you don't have a teaching pro or teaching pros and you don't have people to do that, you're also going to lose your outside um, tennis program that hundreds of kids take every summer. Um, and that's that's exposure. Um, tennis is, a, like I said, a lifetime fitness activity, and I just think it's great that kids are exposed to it, and some will keep going with it and some won't, um, certainly. Um, but anyway, I, I worry about the dominoes um, that fall. I also would echo what somebody else said here is, is I'd like to think of it positively of the opportunity that Bettendorf has. And whether it would be through uh, possibly a bond referendum based on the pool, and then you um, slide in the fitness center, some other things you want to do for the future. Um, this task force idea I thought was an excellent idea, um, but... Anyway, to, to just summarize, I think it's so important to have tennis and pickleball indoors at the fitness center, and I hope the city of Benton North, hopefully along with uh, others who are willing to chip in and help with ideas, can come up with some solution that keeps tennis in Benton North. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Brogage. Good to see you. Anybody else wish to be heard? Approach the podium in the back if you'd like to be heard. Okay, we'll close public request of council then. Thank you all for being here to speak. And we'll move to our first public hearing. This is a public hearing with regard to the FG80 site development sanitary and stormwater project. Uh, Brian, you got a quick update or Jeff, we understand what's going there. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the project then we'll hit this public hearing, sir. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in accordance with the approved development agreement for FG80 development, uh, for the project located at the northeast corner of Forest Grove Road and uh, Forest Grove Drive and Middle Road intersection, this project uh, includes the construction of all the public uh, sanitary sewer and storm sewer as part of that development. Any questions for Brian before we open our public hearing? Any questions, Frank or Jerry or Greg? All right, then let's... Talk about a public hearing. Michelle, did we publish notice of this public hearing? Yes, we did, Your Honor, and I do have affidavit of publication. Did we receive any written correspondence with regard to the same? No, we did not. All right, let's open the public hearing with regard to the FG80 Site Development Sanitary and Stormwater Project. Anybody here wish to be heard on this item? Okay, we'll close that public hearing, move to the resolution. Council Member Norman, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I do have a resolution approving the plan specifications and form of contract for the FG80 Site Development Sanitary and Storm Sewer Project. I move approval of the resolution. Second. Is there any discussion here? Frank or Jerry or Greg, any discussion? All right, Michelle, please call the roll. Norman? Aye. Sexer? Baden, Webster, Aye. Adamson, Brown, Aye. Connors. Aye. Okay, we have unanimously passed that site development sanitary and stormwater project. We'll move to our next public hearing. This is with regard to 1200 Devil's Glen Road and a small piece of property to convey. Who wants to tackle this one? Who's going to give them? Okay. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just uh, a small piece of property, as you mentioned, at 1200 Devil's Glen Road. Um, this parcel is no longer needed by the city. It used to be, and the city engineer might, or um, public works director might want to correct me, but I believe it used to be uh, used for a, for a pump station or a lift station of some type. That has been abandoned and, and been gone for years and is no longer required. Um, this piece of property was recently rezoned, and it's a potential development for um, some housing to come into the city. 
And to um, facilitate that, we, we should probably get rid of this piece of property. Honestly, it's doing nothing for the city besides requiring our maintenance. Um, it's about uh, 0.28 of an acre, um, kind of a key shaped piece of property. And um, again, no city facilities there, no reason for the city to own this property anymore. I can answer any questions if you have them. Yes. Councilmember Webster, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, unless I'm looking at this wrong, there's a bike path that goes right over this. There is a connection to the bike path that does go over that piece of property, but that that trail access is included in an easement that several easements actually that overlap on the property. So we're vacating the city owned part, but we're leaving a access easement within it. All easements re are retained. Okay. Good question, but you feel okay with that, right? Yep. Yep. Any other questions? Yes, Jerry. Mark yeah, or Chris, go right ahead. So th this piece of property has a, n there are a number of easements that uh, relate to this property. All easements, <laughs> all of the city's interest in any easement or any rights of way would be maintained. We're only going to, to so we will retain all easement rights, including the access, the sewer easement, uh, and to the extent that the easement agreement required you know, or, or indicated that no trees could be um, taken down or that green space would be included in the development, that all re remains. So it really is maintaining the status quo with respect to all easements, and it gets rid of the city's um, other property interests, but we will retain everything that is, is there and that is allowing the, the trail to exist and, and that affects the trees and other uh, restrictions with, when it comes to the, to the trees or the other green space requirements. Other questions before our public hearing? Frank or Greg, any questions? All right. Let's talk about the public hearing. Michelle, did we publish notice of this public hearing? Yes, we did, Your Honor, and I do have an affidavit of publication. Did we receive any written correspondence with regard to the same? No, we did not. Did we get, didn't we get a letter that you just sent today? Was that at 1,200? Yes, but it wasn't regarding the vacation. Yeah, it was a different it was just issue. <coughs> just regarding saying, development. don't do it. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Let's open the public hearing with regard to 1,200 Devils Glen. Anybody here wish to be heard on this item? All right, we'll close the public hearing and we'll move to a resolution for council member uh, Connors, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I almost went right back. Have a resolution approving the vacation of city-owned property generally located at 1200 Devil's Glen Road, parcel number 84271903, and conveyance to the owner of Lot 1, Devil's Bluff Subdivision. I move approval of the resolution. Second. Is there discussion on this item? All right, hearing none, Michelle, would you please call the roll? Nauman? Aye. Sexer? Baden? Webster? Aye. Adamson? Brown? Aye. Connors? Aye. All right, we move to an ordinance at second reading. Council Member Webster, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a second reading of an ordinance amending Better City Code Section 6 1 322 B2 vehicles entering yield intersection by adding yield intersections on Christie Lane at Berkshire Street, on Grove Crossing Cash, Cassius Path at Jake's Lane, Grove Crossing Court, and on Matthews Path, Matthews Court, and Cassius Path. I move approval of the ordinance at its second reading. Second. I want you to read it again for me because of all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite again, get all the paths second, crossing. A, I'm teasing. We got a coming. motion and a second. Is there discussion here? It passed unanimously last week, or last meeting. All right. Michelle, please call the roll. Nauman? Aye. Sexer? Aiden? Webster? Aye. Adamson? 
Brown? Aye. Connors? Aye. All right, our second reading of the same ordinance has been unanimously passed. We'll have one more reading of that ordinance. We move to our consent agenda. And yes, Jerry, you were cut off, unfortunately, at Committee of the Whole. And if what you wanted to talk about was the uh, question about the trees, that's fine. I thought maybe we were at consent. Did you have a question on consent? Thank you, sir. All right. Then I'd like to entertain a motion to approve our consent agreement or agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion on any particular item on consent? Anything for you, Jerry? How about you, Frank? Or Greg? All right. Michelle, would you please call the roll? Nauman? Aye. Sexer? Aiden? Webster? Aye. Adamson? Brown? Aye. Connors? Aye. All right. We have unanimously passed each and every item on our consent agenda. We move to the last thing on the agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Wow. So moved. Second. We stand adjourned. Lisa, did you have something? I saw your hand up. I'm sorry. Did you have something to add? Well, I was going to ask. You know, we talked about the fitness center way back when we were doing goal setting. And I know the group Scott was on talked about, you know, community center and all that. That's been, what, a year and a half, two years ago. I had talked to Decker, I don't know, months and months ago about a public meeting on the fitness center. Are we going to do that at all soon? Or maybe can we talk about it? Yeah, I think we can talk about it offline. I think first... And foremost, if you don't have a project before you, uh, there isn't something to talk about. But if you get a project before you, then you certainly will have an opportunity to learn about the project and then determine whether or not, you know, certainly there would be public meetings here, uh, like there have been. You'll have a, uh, a public meeting about it there. And if you wanted to, at that time when there's a project before you, then I think we can certainly consider the idea of a different style meeting. Yeah, I was just going to throw that out since we've got people still in the We should Definitely. just make sure to not, it's not on the agenda tonight. We shouldn't Oh, no, have no. A, I'm yeah. talking about, you know, out in the future there. Yep. So, so, anyway. Okay. okay, anything else? All right. We stand adjourned. Thank you. Good work. Good work.